Hi friends, it's our day to finish Dory Phantasmagory. So without further ado, um, we will go back to the page before. Then I hear screaming, it's my mom. She found my giant fort. Rascal, what is this mess? When did you do this? Clean this up right now. The next chapter, the last chapter, is called Bouncy Ball. It takes a really long time to clean up the fort because I keep forgetting that I'm cleaning up. Rascal! Bedtime! calls my mom. Brush your teeth! As I brush my teeth, I say goodnight to Mr. Nuggy. He has changed back into his regular clothes and is rushing home to see his wife. That's when Violet bursts into the bathroom, crying. I can't find Cherry anywhere, she says, and I've looked everywhere. She's gone. And there is Mr. Nuggy saying goodbye. And then look at the next page. Gulp. What does a gulp sound like? Uh-oh. Where? is that doll. I'll be right back, I say. And you can see it's all capital letters here. Where is that doll? I tiptoe downstairs and into the dark living room. Oh, where did I put Cherry? I gave her to Mrs. Gobblegracker, of course, but what did I really actually do with her? Think, 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 I tell myself. I check all the usual places, the fridge, the toilet, the dishwasher, the garbage, under the couch, in the couch, under the rug, upstairs, in every drawer, under the beds, in the tub. After looking everywhere, I found, and here, I'll show you the pictures in a minute, two quarters, a silver button, a Hello Kitty eraser, a bunch of Legos, a moldy cookie, Cherry's shoe, Violet's rainbow bouncy ball, but no Cherry. I put the bouncy ball in my pocket. Look at all the, oopsie, sorry. By the way, Maisie just came in. She wanted to listen to the end of the story. I think she's sad that it's gonna be over soon. I'm so tired. I give up. Cherry is definitely not in this house. Well, if she's not in this house, where is she? Did someone take her? But who would take her besides Mrs. Oh no. Ah! If Cherry is really gone forever, does that mean Mrs. Gobblegracker is real? You can see the capital letters there. <laughs> my dad hears my scream and comes running. Why are you screaming like a maniac? You're going to wake up the whole neighborhood. Cut this out right now and go to bed. Ah! He drags me by the arm. We're done with you for the day, rascal. Everybody is done with you. Got it? Ah! Stop screaming, screams my dad. <laughs> she was real, I scream. Okay, calm down. She was real. Whatever you say, says my dad, dragging me down the hallway to my room. Just go to bed. Even my dad said she's real. And here she's yelling. It's upside down and it says, help! I have to be brave, I say, clinging to him. No, you have to go to bed, he says, dropping me on my bed. Stay in bed, he says pointing his finger at me. Then he tucks me in tight because it's not safe for you to come out, he says as he shuts my door. And I think I hear him laugh a tiny bit. I fake sleep for a few minutes and then when I'm sure my dad is back downstairs, I sneak out of my room. I'm going to tell Violet the truth, that Cherry is gone forever and it's all my fault. And even though I know she'll want to kill me, 
she doesn't have to even bother because Mrs. Gobblegracker is probably coming back for me. I have an idea. After I tell her the bad news, I'll give Violet her old bouncy ball. That might make her feel a little better. Violet, I say quietly, clutching the bouncy ball tightly behind my back. What, she says. There is something I have to tell you, and I'm gonna show you guys. That's where we use those three dots and ellipses to really, whoops, wait a minute, yeah. So I know to pause as I'm reading these words and wait a minute. There is something I have to tell you. Um, I, but then I don't believe what I see. My mouth drops open. Is that Cherry lying right there next to Violet? How, 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 oh, how did she get there? I ask. Oh, Luke found her when he snuck outside to catch fireflies, says Violet. I must have left her on the front stoop, but I don't know when. Oh, I say quietly, but inside my head, my thoughts are loud. Oh, the stoop, of course. I threw her out the front door when Mrs. Gobblecracker was leaving. Hi, Maisie. <laughs> she wants to say hello to you guys. Oh. Now you can see my laundry in the background. Real life in Miss Wimberger's house. Oh, did I, I showed you that picture, right? She's remembering here. What did you want to tell me, Violet asks. Oh, yeah, that. Well, I say, climbing into her bed and tucking myself into her cozy, warm covers. Well, Mrs. Gobblegracker isn't real after all, I say. I know. I'm the one who made her up, stupid. You did? Oh, yeah, I say. Thanks, Violet. That was a fun game, but it got a little scary at the end. I'm so happy that I get to stay home in this cozy little house with my family after all. Good night, I say to Violet. Good night, she says, giving me a little shove. Now get into your own bed. Before I get out of her bed, I hide the rainbow bouncy ball under Violet's pillow as a secret little gift. The next morning is Saturday, and our parents are still asleep. Luke and Violet are playing with bouncy ball with the bouncy ball that Violet found under her pillow. They are laughing as the ball hits the ceiling and flies off the walls, hitting them on their heads. Let's bounce it on the stairs, says Luke. On the stairs, they are laughing even harder. Boy, do I wish I could play. Suddenly, it's quiet. I run upstairs to go look. The bouncy ball bounced into the toilet. Luke and Violet stand over the toilet, staring down at the sunken ball. <laughs> what should we do? shrieks Violet. Are we in trouble? asks Luke. We'll have to get it out, says Violet. How do we do that? asks Luke. And then they both turn around to find me behind them, watching, smiling. Rascal will get it, right, Rascal? Says Violet, nodding her head yes. Right away, I roll up my nightgown sleeve and I stick my arm deep into the bottom of the toilet. Luke and Violet cringe. What does it mean to cringe, you guys? Do you know what it means? It's kind of like, oh, and cover their eyes and make gagging noises. What would that look and sound like, my friends? They're cringing and covering their eyes and making gagging noises. Here it is, I say, holding up the bouncy ball, my arm dripping with toilet water, dripping toilet water. Violet squeezes practically the whole bottle of foamy soap on my arm and helps, helps me wash my hands and the ball. Thanks, rascal, says Violet. You saved the bouncy ball. I am so happy I am beaming. We all agree that we don't need to tell mom and dad. All day, all I can think about is the bouncy ball. Every time I think about it, I feel so proud. Remember when I saved the bouncy ball? I ask Violet. Uh-huh, she says. 
after dinner, Luke says, Rascal, close your eyes and open your hand. My whole life, I've always wanted someone to say this to me. Before I even open my eyes, I know exactly what it is. It's the rainbow bounty ball. You can borrow it, Rascal, Violet says. It's not to keep. Really? I say. Really? And I want to show you guys. Really is written first in regular letters with one exclamation point, but then it says, really? And italics with three, not exclamation points, question marks. And then it has three question marks. So I know to say, really? With that kind of expression. Since you saved it, she says. I hug Luke and Violet. Let's play, says Luke. Yeah, says Violet. Bounce it. I try and think of the best bouncy ball game I can think of. I hold the bouncy ball very tightly, close my eyes, and concentrate. All these pictures come rushing into my brain at once. <laughs> wow, there's a lot to see in this picture. A two-page illustration. Okay, I got it. The ball is really a poison gumball, and if it hits the ceiling, it explodes, and hot lava pours out of it, and we all melt. And when we melt, we turn back into cavemen, and Mrs. Gobblegracker lives in the cave next door, and she... No, not Mrs. Gobblegracker again, says Violet. Okay, I say. But everything else? They agree. Okay, everything else, they say. My brother and my sister and I play bouncy ball. I run like a maniac to catch the ball, running into the walls and screaming as it bonks me in the head. When the ball hits the ceiling, we explode. I'm jumping up and down and making loud crashing sounds, the kind of sounds the, kind of sounds the earth makes when it blows up. I leap onto Luke to protect myself from the hot lava. Hot lava is spilling all over the floor. It's bubbling everywhere. We jump on the couch and move the pillows around so that we have a secret cave. Now we are cave people. Violet is the cave mommy, of course. And Luke is the caveman daddy hunter. And guess who gets to be the cave baby? Me. And I'm the cutest little cave baby. Goo goo ga ga boo goo. The end. Oh my goodness. That is the end of our book. My friends, I will just tell you that Abby Hanlon, the author and illustrator, taught first grade ah, in the New York City public school system. Inspired by her students' storytelling and drawings, Abby began to write her own stories for children. Her first book was Ralph Tells a Story. Abby lives in Brooklyn, New York with her husband and their two children. And you can look at more of her books on her website. By the way, on the back, I meant to tell you this um, earlier. It says she's got imagination. She's funny. She's brave. She's a dog. No, she's a girl. She's Dory. What a rascal. Oh, my goodness. I loved reading this book so much with you. And now we have the weekend. And then I'll start a new book on Monday. I'm not even going to give you a hint about what it is because I'm not sure that it's going to arrive in time. That's why I'm not telling you. Um, and I will give you a little tiny assignment about the book, um, but no rush in doing it, and I'll, I'll put that on Seesaw. Bye, friends. Thanks for being such great listeners and responders.